Hello, welcome to Coding Is For You. Today we're going to be doing X unit tests. I'm gonna create a simple application and create some unit tests and kind of try to teach you and show you how we use unit tests in the real world and why you would use them. Okay, first of all, let's get started with a simple application. Let's go ahead and open a folder. I have a folder on my desktop called unit tests. Always start with a folder. Okay, what we're gonna do is start with a console application just to keep things simple. So we went to terminal, new terminal, we're gonna do a .NET new console. And that's gonna create all these files for you to get ready and create your first project. And we've got our hello world in here and we can run it, we can go to debug and we can run it and it will say hello world and we've seen that before, right? Let's clean this up. Okay, to use unit tests, First of all, let's make a program and do something with it to show you how the real world, world works in a very simple way. Okay, m imagine we have a program here and we write some code that does something and we'll call it static void add int x int y, okay? And we'll make it public. That way anyone can access it. And we'll do public static bool. This needs to be an integer. I'm returning an integer. Might as well do it right now. We're gonna return, return x plus y, okay? So that's just gonna return a simple uh, x plus y. Now this is going to do an is odd and you're gonna pass in a value and and is odd, what it's gonna do, it's gonna divide any number by two and see if there's a remainder. If there's a remainder, it's then it's odd because anything divided by two, it should be even with no remainder. Okay, so we've got two functions here and we're gonna call them, let's say int y, yy equals to add and let's pass in a four and a five, okay? And let's do a console.write line. And we'll pass in yy just to see what we get. Yy. So we're going to write out our answers. And here we're going to do an a console.write line. And we're going to add, pass in a number is odd. And we're going to pass in a number five, and we should get a true. Right? So here we should get a nine and we should get a true. We're gonna write hello world. We're gonna call the add and we're gonna call is odd and we're gonna get some value. So let's run this real quick. Always save everything, save all. Debug, debug, run. Okay, so we got our hello world. We got a nine and it's true that that number is odd. Okay, let's just pretend like you're in a big corporation and you have a lot of these functions and methods and they're doing lots of complicated things. And right here, it's very simple, but in the real world, you're doing complicated things and lots of people are touching this code. All right, so suppose somebody comes in and what often happens, there's a lot of people working on this code, they're checking things in and out and in and out and you think everything's okay, but then all of a sudden somebody adds something that breaks it, but nobody knows it. And without any tests, you will never know that because you'll push it out and you won't know for three or four days until something really bad goes wrong that something went wrong. That's why we have unit tests. You're gonna write tests against these methods that when you run them, they either work or they don't. And the second somebody breaks them accidentally, they're gonna tell you that they're broken. And that's what we're doing. We're writing tests to make sure your code works before you push it out to production. So we're gonna use XUnit, which is kind of like, it's kind of like the new way of doing, th doing testing. We used to use NUnit and now we use XUnit. So we're gonna go back to our file here and we're gonna need some packages first off because as it is, our project is not ready yet to use XUnit and we're gonna to need to install some packages. So what you're going to need, you're going to need NuGet Package Manager. You need to get that extension and of course you'll need C-sharp Visual Studio Code, and you should be able to already run console applications. 
Now, assuming that you have OmniSharp, C Sharp Visual, Visual Studio Code, and NuGet Package Manor, Manager, we're going to go up to, let's close all this stuff. Nice and clean desktop. I'm going to type in Control Shift P. Right there in the middle of your, your screen, it tells you show all commands. And we're going to click on Add Package from NuGet Package Manager. And right before we do that, let's open up our project file and we can see what we need to have here. And as we add these packages, it's going to add them to our project file and we can watch that happen. So we're, we're targeting the NetCore app 2.1 framework. And again, we're going to go Control Shift P, click on the package, and we're going to type in Microsoft.net.test.sdk. You're going to hit enter. You're going to click on it. And then you're going to click on the latest version. And in my case, it's 16.0.0. Okay, that just that just installed this package reference right here. That's number one of three. The next thing we're going to do is go Control Shift P, New Get Package Manager. You're going to install X Unit. Enter X Unit. Pick the top one, 2.4.1 or whatever is latest for you. And again, there it is. There's one more we need, and that is called Control Shift P, New Get Package Manager X Unit dot Runner dot Visual Studio. 2.4.1. Okay, now let's save everything. And just for good measure, let's open a new terminal window and do a dot net build. Everything's saved and we did a build and everything is still good. Or is it? Now, here's a problem. When you install this Microsoft.NET S.SDK, I was getting this error when I did this, and there's the reason is because it, what it's doing is we have an entry point into our program in the main method here. But when we installed that unit test, it made another one for us in the background, and that's not good because now we've got two, two entry points, and it doesn't know which one to use. Normally, it would just use the main, but we installed the SDK, so now we've got two. And to fix that, we have to tell this part of the program do not generate a program file automatically. So add this line right here in your project file called generate program file false. And this will stop this error from happening. Then you can have both a console application and a test. Okay. Now we're going to go back up here. Make sure always you save everything. A couple times I've done this. I didn't have it saved and I, it was running and I would have an error. And I thought it was saved, but it wasn't. Okay, now let's try this again. We're going to do a .NET build. At this point, everything be built and it's all succeeded. I could run these programs again and they would work fine. Okay, now we need to start writing tests. And that's the whole point of this. Right now, you have a program, but it doesn't have any tests. And again, I know this is a very, very simple program. Very simple. But remember, you're going to be building complex programs and you're going to need tests to test them to make sure they don't break. Okay. So what we're going to do here is go to add a class. I'm going to call it test class.cs. Now we have this empty test class and I'm going to go ahead and make it my first test. I'm basing everything I'm doing here off an article which I'm going to click in the description and leave a description so you can have the article also. But what we're doing is we're going to create a class that's using X unit and what we're going to do is we're going to write our first test against the add so we're adding these numbers let's write a test we're gonna write a test against this to make sure it's working so we're going to write a public void passing add test and you're going to need to put in what's called an attribute above it called fact and I'll tell you what that is here in a minute. But what we're doing is we're going to, and when you have this X unit, you can call what these are what's called an assert. Assert dot equal. And what you're doing is you're comparing two things. You're comparing what you think it is to what it really is. And we're going to compare four to 
program dot add to n2. Okay, do you see what we're doing there? We're calling program over here and we're adding two and two and we're supposed to get back four. That's what we think. And that's what we're calling a fact. Facts are things that you think are true. And so this test should pass with a program true. And I'm gonna go up and save it. And what we have is a fact. And in a second, we're, I'm gonna show you what's a theory. You have two types, you have facts and theories. But right now we're dealing with facts. Now, let's clear this out. And we're gonna run dot net test and just wait. Test runs successful. Okay, um, what it did was it's proving to you, it may seem silly that you know that four is two and two, but remember, these can be a lot more complex than this and a lot easier to break than, than what you're seeing right here. Let's suppose we put in a five. What would happen if we put in a five? We know it's gonna fail because five is not equal to four, what this program is going to add up. And you can imagine an, an, a financial program that might do a bunch of complex math and you put in what you think it should be. It, maybe it's adding interest on a certain amount or something. And you expect it to be exactly this amount when you pass in this amount. But some guy goes in there and writes some bad code accidentally and they don't add up. Now you've broken the test, you've got some bad, bad code. That's why we're doing this. All right, let's run this. You can hit the up arrow, run.net test, and it should fail. It did not. And like I said, you have to save. Always remember, see that little blue thing over here? You always have to save. Let's run it again. It should fail. All right, there it is. It's telling you exactly what failed. Expected five, see, five, but it got four. That's why it failed. Okay, so now we're gonna try a failing test, which is also a fact. So in this case, we expect this to fail we expect this to fail, and that would mean not equal. So we expect program.add two and two not to equal five, because it, it's four. And again, let's save, and both of these should pass. We have to save this also. We fix this test. Now, both of these are true it's true that five is not equal to four. It's also true that four is equal to four. Now we've written a test against this, and if anybody goes and messes with it, we'll know for sure that it's broken if they did mess with it. Now, both of these should pass, and there, test runs successful. Everything is good. Now we're gonna test our other method in another test type class called a theory. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna write a test, public void, my first theory. So theory is, so what is a theory according to this definition? Facts are tests which are always true. You expect them to be true. They test invariant, invariant conditions. Theories are tests for which, which are only true for a particular set of data. Does that make sense? So what we're gonna do is test the is odd. This test is gonna have an integer and it's going to have a value a number, let's call it my number, program dot is odd value. Now you're probably wondering where are my values gonna come from? What we're doing here is we have to write, this is the theory. It's not a fact, it's a theory. And we're gonna write several different test cases. Inline data is a keyword. We're gonna pass in a three, inline data, a five, inline data, and then a six. So as you know, what it's gonna do is it's gonna call, first of all, this needs to be the same. So let's get rid of this down here so we can just see this. So it's gonna run this test three times. It's gonna run it for three, for five, and for six. And it's gonna fail on number six because three is odd, five is odd, six is even. Okay, remember to save. 
And what are we testing? We are testing is odd, which is over here in our program, and it's going to return a true or false based on whether or not it's odd or even. So we should again we should get true, true, false. And the third one's actually going to fail because it's not odd. Let's run it test.net test. All right, not only did it fail, it told you exactly what it failed on, and that would be number six, because six is not odd. All right, guys, that was an introduction to X unit testing and unit testing in general. This is a very powerful concept. In fact, a lot of companies make you write your test before you write anything else. So you would write a test that would test, you would write maybe this part here, and then you would write is odd. Then you would write this part here, and then you would write add. And that's called test first driven development. You might hear that test driven development it means you write the test, then you write that way you have tests no matter what. A lot of people, this is kind of a controversial thing. A lot of people or companies don't like test driven development. They think it's a waste of time because you think, oh, you got to write all these tests and you know, you just should have just coded why you need all these tests when in reality it does take more time, but later on it saves you. I got a story for you one time. We were writing, I was, we were writing tests and we were writing tests and we were writing tests and we were working on this big website and everything was working good. And then I got in trouble because my page wasn't working. I'm like, I know it was working yesterday. So I went and ran all the tests and guess what? Someone had changed a store procedure deep within the code that caused one of my tests to fail. I didn't do it. Somebody else did. And I found who did it. I found who changed that store procedure deep in the code and I found what the error was, even though it was a website with like 10 pages on it, it was failing in the middle of the website and I had no idea until I ran the test. See, the test actually saved me. And that's why it's a good idea to write tests. It's a kind of a pain and it's kind of a chore, but it also can save you and it can save you a lot of time. Anyway, that's my spiel. I hope you like this video. This is test driven development. If you're really interested in this, I can go even deeper and deeper. It just depends on what people are interested in.